Hey, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome back to beginning HTML5. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about some extra HTML markups that don't really go into any of the other sections. So first things first, uh, what you see here is usually what I work with at the beginning, and then I delete it. So this comes up when you jump into Dreamweaver and you create a um, HTML5 do uh, document from uh, from scratch. If you hit HTML5, this is what comes up. Of course, the stuff in the P does not. So um, the main thing I want to talk about is the doc types. So now with HTML5, all you have to worry about is that you have this guy here, doc doctype.html, and this could be all capped out too. So you could have it like this, doctype, whatever, doesn't matter. Anyways, so uh, that signifies to the browser that is HTML5. Uh, it's very simplified compared to what uh, the previous versions were for HTML4, um, XHTML, uh, strict XHTML, and XML. So uh, now our, our our page knows what we want to do with it so that's what we're gonna work with and then of course you tell it that it's HTML and where the HTML is and then you have you know the head the body in here it's telling it what the um, encoding is that it's UTF-8 um, and then the head like you can remember that we did at the beginning and then the body so now that we know that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this stuff so that we have a more organized workspace. But in normal in normal documents, you'll have all that stuff on there uh, all embedded into your page. All right, so uh, first thing that I want to talk about is uh, comments. Comments are done by doing the um, exclamation mark and then two dashes. So it's an exclamation mark, two dashes, then two dashes again. And then you can put whatever you want in here and it will not show up, as you see there. But if one of your users goes inside of, shows the source code, they will be able to see the comments. So you do it if you want to uh, you know, keep track of it and then maybe delete it before you publish it. Or something like that. I don't know what you would do, but uh, if you don't want someone to know how to recreate your page, then you know, maybe have a code for your comments or something. Anyways, that's up to you to decide. But people can see it if they look inside the source code of the page. All right. So now we're going to jump into uh, ID attributes. Now this is what you're, we're going to use when we start working with CSS. This basically sets parts of the. Um, of the page separate from each other. So for example, if we wanted uh, to show some emphasis to that school was closed, we're going to say ID uh, school closure. Something like that. And you'll see that in here it does not look any different, but when we want to do CSS, we could create a rule for that ID that will stylize it differently than everything else. So that's an ID, so we can create an ID, a separate ID for each of these, you know, whatever we want. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Just, uh, just going to show you the differences here. And then finally we have class. Now class is what you want to do um, if you want to have multiple parts of the page have one exact styling for, for separate classes. You could have more than one classes. So it's a little bit more a uh, little bit more of a block than ID. So you set uh, classes to have, um, for example, let's say I wanted this to be of instead of ID, I wanted to be class important. So now whenever I go and do my CSS, I could uh, actually my, my HTML and then I'm about to go and do my CSS, I could just set everything that I want to be inside that class to class important. So now all of these that I set to class will create, will um, have that rule attached to it inside CSS. So that is the uh, class attribute. Alrighty, 
And then here in the in the reference book, it's talking about block and inline elements. Those are basically the ones that you see that start on a new line. So you see here, P starts it on a new line, um, unordered list, ordered list, um, header one, header two, header three, whatever. Um, those start on a new line. So those are called block elements. And then we have inline elements, which basically are everything that don't do that. So for example, setting something uh, bold, italicized, uh, emphasis, and uh, the image. Those will not push it into a new uh, sentence or paragraph or whatever you want to call it. And then we have uh, um, the division. Oopsies. So division is what you'll see a lot on um, on other people's code, other people's website uh, styling. So this is basically what we're doing here is we're setting apart a separate um, entity inside of um, our page. So we're saying that you basically use division to divide up your page. So you're saying like, okay, this is the header, this is uh, main content, this is, um, you know, I don't know, images, this and that. So what you do is you start with a division and then you could give that ID. So also the main part is to break up your um, your content. Another thing is to set a certain styling for that whole division. So here you see that we have an ID there. So that sets that same ID for everything inside the division unless we set that separately. So that will create a um, a whole styling for that whole division. So we want to have, for example, it's a paragraph of text. We want that to be a division and style that all exactly the same. All right. Another one is uh, is called span. And span is basically what you use if you don't want to push something onto a new line by division ID or a class. So for example, um, if let's say, so let's say I don't want the so inside of this uh, class. So you say span this, uh, you say um, I don't want it inside the whole entire class. So we're going to say span class um, school, for example. So now this so is going to be inside this class and uh, this this piece here is going to be inside the um, inside the new class and we need to close the span yeah so that way we could style in, um, certain stuff inside the sentences with a um, and you see here that's the division that you see so it's got a red block block around it saying that if you set a rule it will do that whole thing all right, so those are the basics. Next, we have the iframe. So iframe is what you see when people embed YouTube videos inside their uh, inside their websites, or they have Google Maps embedded in there, some sort of uh, applet embedded inside of their page. They usually use uh, iframe or, of course, applet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that applet. I'm going to make sure that we don't need any more of that P stuff. I don't think we do. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of all this here. Let me go ahead and wipe that. All right, so let's go ahead and start with an iframe. So of course, as you guessed, it starts with iframe, and then we're going to do the width. So here in my book, it says 450. And of course, you kind of want to set this to whatever uh, your reference is. You don't want to cut too much of it off. And then you have your URL, blah blah blah. So uh, during the the practice, during the practice, I will have uh, some source for one of my YouTube tutorial videos in order to uh, show you guys that. So basically, what you want to do is after this, you want to close it, and then you'll see after I do this, it will close iframe. All right, so uh, then if you look over here, you would see that URL that's embedded if it was actually a real URL. And there's a, 
so the source of course like I said is the URL then you have the height and the width and there's a couple other things that you could do most of them are um, no longer supported in HTML5 so I won't really uh, mention it but there is uh, there is something called uh, seamless where basically it cr it cuts some of the side pieces off to make it look like it was originally there on the page so you don't get any weird stuff but you don't have to actually put it in there it will do it automatically actually let's talk about some of these old um, deprecated stuff so first off we have um, I need to get in here really quick so we have a uh, scrolling and that is if you want it to have a scroll bar on the right hand side so you could scroll up and down most of the time if you're embedding something you don't want it to do that so you're gonna set scrolling to no and then you have a frame border so do you want a border around the iframe to separate it from the rest of the page in this case we don't want it to have a and that's of course um, the distance from the the outline plus right so you don't have an X and Y it's just this is the thickness here and uh, yeah those are the other two uh, settings that you could do on it another big thing here that we're going to talk about right now is uh, meta tags meta tags are what Google uses to um, their spiders use that come through your website and archive it into Google search and other search engines so it basically gives a description of the page so for example um, if we go all the way let me see if this I don't know if it's going to remember all the way back there I'm returning all the way back to this here okay so that's all the way back just hold control Z and then here we have the title and here you can see that uh, that meta tag there so let's go ahead and yeah we'll keep that there and we'll go after the title and then we'll set uh, another meta tag make sure that you get these meta tags right it will break your it'll break your website if you don't so this is um, HTML 5 tutorial um, markup okay and then we're gonna go ahead and do a forward slash so now we got that meta tag in there and it's not gonna show up it's only gonna show up if you look um, to the spiders to the things that are the things that are looking at the code um, the source code of your HTML5 page are gonna be able to see it So let's go ahead and space this stuff out and take spaces out of stuff that we don't need a space in okay so then we have uh, so that's descri that's the uh, description, and then this is our next meta tag. It's called um, keywords. So this is where you would have a whole bunch of different stuff separated by uh, parenthesis, um, a comma. So then we're gonna jump into content, and then we're gonna say like um, web design, CSS, or whatever um, HTML5 beginner beginning blah 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 all separated there and then you do the exact same thing you close it bam done with that and then uh, we have robots so it says here this indicates whether search engines should add this page to their search results or not a value of no index can be used if this page should not be added a value of no follow can be used if search engines should add this page to the results but not any pages that link to it so let's uh, go ahead and uh, not do any of that because we want it to add the page yeah so we wanted to add the page so forget about the robots I mean you you want a you want a engine you want a search engine to pick up your page alright so then you have the um, author the author of the page and so let's just say Steven okay 
and then we're gonna go ahead and close that. Meta um, name params. Oh, sorry, parag. Par uh, this prevents the browser from caching the page that is storing locally. Um, so basically, I would probably keep this as um, keep this away. So this is basically telling it that it doesn't want you to save the uh, cache the page onto your onto your hard drive so that you load the page quicker just in case like it doesn't update all the time. Um, you could use this or you could not use this. Let's go ahead and show you the content. Content equals no cache. So that would be if you don't want it to actually cache the page. Actually, I got these two wrong. These are not actually name. These are HTTP equivalent equals author. So that's HTTP equivalent. Uh, oops, that's supposed to be a dash. So that's dash equivalent um, auth equals author and then the content. Okay. So then we're gonna go ahead and cut copy this. Paste this here. There you go. So that's that's how you set it up right there. And uh, finally the very last one. HTTP equivalent. equals expires and then when this content expires so this is basically saying that uh, when this when this page hits that expire date it will turn off a uh, cache and it will recache the page And uh, you can only specify it in certain um, setups. So we're gonna say Friday. We're gonna say what it says in the book. So it's a uh, so there's the there's the uh, setup there. And I totally screwed up typing in Friday oops okay so Friday 04 April 2014 235959 um, general I don't know what that is I don't know the time time zones too much okay so we're gonna move on to the final portion of this lesson here and that is the escape characters now, so basically what they do is that if you want to use that to UTF-8 um, as a setup to do special characters that are used, for example, let's say you want to do a less than sign. Obviously, a less than sign won't work because it already has a let, uh, it's, a, it's a keyword, it's already defined. So you could do certain things to um, create that type of thing. Let's go ahead and cut this back again. So here we have, um, so you do a certain type. So we say and, and there you see all of the things come up in Dreamweaver. You see all the escape characters. So here we want to do LT and then a colon, semicolon. And there you have that sign. And then let's, so there's a whole bunch of ones. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but if you're using a smart um, editor like this, then uh, you, could, you could just enter in this at sign and look at every single one that you want and it'll show you everything that you can do. And you can see some are missing there, doesn't actually. 
have some of them. So let's say we want to do a pound sign. We want to do, oops. There you go. It's a euro. All right, so uh, that's basically it. You can look up all those uh, online, all the escape characters, but you, they basically all start with the uh, and sign. Some of them have pound, etc., etc. After that, actually, th some of them have names. So there's names, and then there's a number. So let me do one more. So let's go ahead and show you the other way of writing the. Oops other way of writing that uh, less than sign. So you could do P here and then you could do at sign where is that pound character? Pound, there it is. Pound 60. And that is its, you, I guess that would be its, um, what is it? Hex? That should be what it is. An ASCII, sorry an ASCII. Or UTF-8 I guess. Whatever. I don't know what exactly this here is in. Yeah. So you can find that online, but you see it here as two examples, and I'll do you one more example for uh, the the euro sign there. So you're gonna want to do the and sign. There it is. And sign, and then the pound sign. Where's the pound sign? There it is. Pound sign. What are we at? One six three. And then you one six three, and there there you go. So uh, you can look at all those online. And yeah, so this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials. I thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it in this series and other series as well. Um, if you have any questions, email me. The link to the book is in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.